Welcome to the channel The Secrets of the Universe. My name is Rishabh and this is the ninth video in the series of quantum mechanics. In the last video we learned about the basics of special theory of relativity and Compton effect. We saw why Compton effect is so important in astronomy and how we can explain the spectrum of active galaxies that contain supermassive black holes at their centers using the Compton effect. In today's video we are going to learn about another important relativistic quantum phenomena, pair production. Though it's a topic of particle physics, I have decided to include it in this series because of two reasons. The first is to show the importance of special theory of relativity in quantum mechanics and the second is that since we have covered seven videos on the particle and wave aspects of radiation or light, Pair production is yet another important phenomena that sheds light on the particle nature of light. So before we start, make sure you subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos of this series. In the year 1925, Erwin Schrödinger and Werner Heisenberg gave their own pictures of quantum mechanics. The Schrödinger picture was also known as wave mechanics because the mathematics involved the use of differential equations. On the other hand, the Heisenberg picture was known as matrix mechanics because it involved the use of matrices. These two quantum pictures, although they could explain a wide range of quantum phenomena, were non-relativistic. That is, they could not explain the behavior of particles at relativistic speeds or the speeds close to that of light. Special theory of relativity and quantum mechanics were finally reconciled by Paul Dirac in the year 1928. Paul Dirac saw something very strange in his equations. The existence of antimatter or the particles having opposite charge. So if an electron is a particle that has negative charge, its corresponding antiparticle is a positron having positive charge. We'll discuss all this in the coming videos of this series when we discuss the Dirac equation. Four years after Paul Dirac gave his theory of antimatter, Carl Anderson discovered it experimentally. So when highly energetic photons, gamma ray photons, they pass through a foil, gamma ray photons disappear, creating an electron and a positron. This process or this phenomena is known as pair production. But why do we need a foil for this process to take place? Can't it take place in empty space? The answer is no. In order to conserve momentum, we need an external coulomb field and that coulomb field is provided by the nuclei of the atoms of this foil. Technically speaking, pair production is the creation of particles and their corresponding antiparticles from neutral bosons. Other examples include the creation of muon and antimuon and a proton and antiproton. So in this very case, we can write the equation of interaction as gamma which is the gamma ray photon that we are using. It disappears into an electron and a positron, which is the antimatter counterpart of the electron. Now you may ask a very simple question, that is, why only a particle and its antiparticle is produced in pair production? For example, in this case, why only an electron and a positron? Why not two electrons or two positrons? Or a single electron or a single positron? The answer is conservation laws. In particle physics, there are some physical quantities that must be conserved before and after the reaction. One of them is electric charge. So let's see how electric charge is conserved. Electric charge before and after the interaction must be the same. That is, consider the left hand side. So left hand side, I have electric charge. Photon is a neutral particle, so its electric charge is zero. Now, in, on the right hand side, the electric charge of an electron is minus 1 in terms of the elementary electric charge, that is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 uh, joules. And that of a po uh, positron is plus 1. So, minus 1 plus 1 is 0, hence electric charge before and after the interaction is conserved. Another important quantum number is the lepton number. Leptons are the elementary particles with half integer spin that do not undergo strong interaction. In the standard model of physics, there are six leptons, electron, muon, tau, 
and the three neutrinos with the same name. Each of these leptons is assigned a lepton number equal to 1 and the lepton number given to their antimatter counterparts is minus 1. So in this case even the lepton number is conserved uh, before the reaction. Now since the photon is a boson, it's not a lepton, its lepton number is 0. So L equal to 0 on the left hand side. Electron has lepton number 1 and the antimatter counterparts of electron has lepton number minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is again 0. So lepton number and the charge in this case are conserved. There, there are many other physical quantities also that must be conserved. I have just told two of them. Now before we move on to the applications of pair production in astrophysics, I want to discuss another important aspect of this phenomena. Can all the photons produce matter and antimatter pair? That is, if I use a visible photon, that is photon of the visible range instead of a gamma ray photon, can it produce the particle and antiparticle pair? The answer is no. Why? Because of the conservation of one of the most important parameter or the physical quantity in particle physics, that is the total energy. The total energy of the particles before and after the interaction must be the same. Using Einstein's E equal to mc square, we can easily calculate the minimum energy that is required for the process or the phenomena of pair production to take place. For that, we have to consider that the electron and the positron that, are crea that is created after the uh, gamma ray photon disintegrates, they have the kinetic energy equal to zero. In this way only we can calculate the minimum energy that is required to produce the pair. So consider the energy that we are seeking, E minimum. This is the energy we want to find of the gamma ray photon. Now this will be equal to, since the kinetic energy is zero, they only have the rest mass energy mc square. So E minimum equal to mc square plus mc square, where m is the mass of the electron. Electron and the positron have the same mass. So this becomes E minimum is equal to 2 mc square. This all follows from Einstein's theory of relativity. So this becomes 2 into, now mc square, m is the mass of electron. In MeV, that is mega electron volts, it is 0 0.511 MeV. So this turns out to be 1.022 MeV. So this is the minimum energy that is required to create a pair of electron and a positron. Now the visible light has energy range between 2 to 3 electron volts. Now you can see clearly that this is about a million times less than the minimum energy required for pair production. Any photon that has lesser energy than this number cannot produce the electron and positron pair. So, so this is the reason why visible ray photons cannot cause pair production or they cannot produce the electron and positron pairs. You can also calculate the wavelength and the frequency of the gamma rays that is required, the minimum wavelength. So using Planck's law, E is equal to h nu, you can find the frequency by plugging in the value of E from here. You can find the frequency of the radiation that is required. Uh, when you plug in the values, nu comes out to be the frequency 2.47 into 10 raised to power 20 hertz. This is the minimum frequency and in order to find the minimum wavelength, you have to use the relation C which is the speed of light is equal to nu into lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. So the lambda, uh, sorry, lambda comes out to be, the wavelength come out, comes out to be uh, 1.2 into 10 raised to power minus 12 meters. So I have calculated the minimum energy, minimum wavelength and the frequency that is required for the pair production to take place. Now let's see where pair production comes into play in astrophysics. The process of pair production is used to explain Hawking radiation. When particle and antiparticle is created, it is quickly annihilated. 
but it is also possible that one of them falls into a black hole before annihilation and the other one escapes as Hawking radiation. Pair production is an interesting phenomena. We all know how matter can be converted into energy. That's the basic principle behind the atomic bomb. But pair production is one example where pure energy is converted into matter. Today's video was mostly about particle physics. But again, particle in particle physics, you just use quantum mechanics as a tool to understand what is matter and the universe made up of. Before you go, in the comment section, make sure you give your reviews of these videos. Are you enjoying learning quantum mechanics? See you in the next part.